please for Cole Pigny and Jason, the Eagle Eye Shaw. So it's Shaw and Copigny. Let's rejoin our commentary team, Phil Yates and Jeremy Jones. Thanks very much indeed. Yes, I will say about this match what I said about our first match this evening. OK, it is first round, but it could so easily be a final. Copigny, who's done so much in this game, up against Jason Shaw, who, when he plays his most inspired pool, is a match for anyone. Copenhagen wins the lag. Look at that lag, that was perfect. Yeah, and Jason Shaw's was pretty good as well, so the lag tells you anything about these guys. They're prepared. As Carl Boys was saying in his interview with Jason Shaw, plenty of matches between these two. And historically, they go close. So I can't see anything else in this one. Yeah, I mean, you never know what the proverbial pool gods will bring us right but uh, with opportunity these two usually take advantage and, and just how sports is you expect a close match be interesting to see whether this golden break trend continues we've had five on the session so far one in the first match four in the second the first rack coping you to break and after that perfect lag it is co to get things underway side the two's going to kick up on the side rail so we haven't seen a ton of tactical battles so far in day one but we see one to open and this looks pretty natural to run the cue ball off the left side of the blue two kind of one rail down between the six nine just requires a little bit of an accurate hit on the two there are other paths we'll see yeah it looks like very good speed to get behind the green six and there are some kick shots but they're not easy so he's going to go airborne here to open eagle eye and I think the most worrying aspect for sure here is the fact that the table is wide open extension cold should he give up a chance and I tell you on this kick shot right on this jump shot right here he's gonna try and jump and kick behind this ball that may be getting a, a little going a little overboard I was gonna say just a nice square hit on the two hold the cue ball on the rail there and just take your chances He's trying to come to the back of it. Uh, somewhat of the same results I had in mind. He may leave him a shot, but nothing easy. If you'd given him that before he played the shot, he would have gladly accepted it. And how good are the guys with the short cue these days, putting a little side spin on the cue ball? Can't play the two all the way down. He had to play it at a subtle speed. And a very nervy shot with that corner pocket looming. Now here, if you feel good about the kick path between the three and the six, the red three and the green six to the top rail, it's a pretty good kick shot to come at the blue two. A lot of good things that can happen. He's going to try and knock the two around the eight, back by the nine, and the cue ball up table. Okay, if he attacks here, he'll certainly attack with a high ball, maybe a little right side spin. And watch out for the four getting kicked towards the nine if he decides to go offensive. Normally when 
players are queuing up like that, they're usually going to attack. Oh, he's hitting a draw spin, so he's playing the safety. And he let up on that field. A little fortunate to get the snooker. Sometimes when the balls are awkward and you have a, a safety exchange, you think, well, directly at least, this isn't going to be all that consequential, but you know here, whoever weakens first will probably lose the, lose the rack. Yeah, it's about getting control of the rack and making uh, good decisions from there. And uh, coping E, keeping the short cue in Jason's hands has developed a shot here. Pretty good effort. Now, it looks like he's got to contact a little piece of the six here. So he may draw into a very thin position on the three. We'll see. Yeah, he was trying to punch, draw, and maybe, maybe got a little fortunate to get fairly natural on the cross side bank. Some awkward cueing, though. And we saw graphically in our first match of this evening just how tight these side pockets are for a bank. Niels Fyren missed an eight ball, went 5-1 down as a result, although things worked out very much for him in the end. Nice so control there. This, again, to me, is where Jason doesn't get enough credit. I mean, the obvious safety is all the great players are, you know, top 50 or 60 in the world are very efficient. But when the balls lay a little funny is where I think Jason, uh, like I said, doesn't get enough credit. He's going to play behind the purple five. Perfect speed. The thing with Shaw, as you say, Jeremy, he's creative, isn't he? Both in terms of defense and in attack. He can see shots that some others can't. Yeah, and it seems he always displays a beautiful touch, which is a common common theme with the great players. A right, little favor to make this, I think. Both these players come into this match seeing, you know, things get away from one opponent in each of our first two matches. So really grinding here in game one to get that first shot. Yeah, I don't know what he can really control here. He may get a kiss on the three. Yeah, he had to know it was going to kiss. He had to add side spin to avoid the kiss. So the tactics end abruptly with an error. Yeah, not much here on the pink four. Just gained a little angle on the purple five. Got away from the six, so easy queuing. You know, and all those golden breaks that we saw, we. We heard Jason in his interview kind of reference FSR and avoiding the nine on the break with the cue ball. And you'd wonder why. And we haven't seen it yet. Maybe Max Lechner kind of scratched off the nine once, I think, in his last match. But you flirt with the nine coming back across, which is kind of naturally what wants to happen. It can certainly give you a golden break, but you can also lose the cue ball. So just center of the table here. to begin with 
Well, he's got his opportunity, Co. as normal. Clinical. Pope in here wins the rock. So, first blood is drawn by the representative of Chinese Taipei, who in the first round last year came up against his younger brother, Ko Ping Chung. Psychologically, this is a, an easier task, I think, for Ko, although Jason. the opponent Jason. could hardly be more formidable. Yeah, and I think ever since the World Cup last year, maybe even a little bit prior, I really saw Ko Ping Yi's game start to come into the form he, that he's looking for, that he wants, and I don't think he's really let up since. Now, we spoke with Ko Ping Yi before the match. Let's hear what he's got to say for himself. This is my sixth time to join the World Master. I'm very happy I can join again. So I hope I can play well. My opponent is Jason Shaw. He's a very tough player. It will be a tough match. So I hope I can play well this game. I think I can win the tournament, but it's very tough. I will do my best. <laughs> the trademark smile from Ko Ping Yi, who, by the way, will be teaming up with his brother Ko Ping Chung for Chinese Taipei in the World Cup of Pool next month. Representing Great Britain will be Jason Shaw, but we don't know his partner yet. Whoever it will be, they will make quite a team. corner ball the ones coming up a little thin and maybe the green six is in the way we'll see shortly and what he's looking at is not if he can get at the yellow one he can certainly get at the right side he's trying to see what kind of options he has This is where, you know, the tighter table may get into the head of a player every now and again. But, uh, I mean, if you're going to shoot at this on most tables, I think you're supposed to attack anyways. Yeah, that was center cut to the upper corner really ideal position on the red three the pink four over on the side rail the seven to the eight later in the rack is the real little issue here I got a little thinner here on this ball so with the six the green six you know near the right side it may just take a little longer shot on the purple five He'll come between the eight and nine with the cue ball. And to me, the delivery and, and the way they go about things, coping E and FSR are very similar. You know, they kind of make their decision, and when they get down, it's almost the same delivery every time. Watch the amount of pre strokes. It's usually, I think, two pre strokes to the little shorter pause and then real committed through impact. Okay, I think he wants a little more of an angle on the seven, so he may come back two, three, four inches here. Get a little flat, you start to have to add a little side spin, so I'd like to have a little more angle on the brown seven off of this green six. Extension code. So it looks like he's going to go forward to the rail and back out. And the closer you get, the, oh, I don't know if he wanted that much angle, though. Wow, that's a lot. So now he's going to have to ease this. I 
hard to argue what he was trying, but you don't want to flirt with too much. He may get over the nine. It's going to escape the nine and pretty routine eight, black eight up in the left corner. I think this has been typical coping. You eat just efficient and reliable. He won a couple of tournaments last year, you know, including the Asian nine ball open. He's always a threat wherever he turns up, and he came very close to winning this tournament. Won three matches to get to the semi final, only the eventual winner, Joshua Filler, blocked his path. And Joshua Filler, he took a lot of them down now out of the event. Look at that, 33 years old, nine ball ranking of 13th. Of course, 2015 world champion at the age of 33 now. You know, but his brain, you know, and of course the stroke, so efficient, but it it almost fools you and not, you know, reminding you how great he is, really, just because uh, it makes it look so easy. On that potted history of his career, we could include the fact he won the World Cup of Pool with Chang Yu Lung. He had won the the China Open nine ball, which is a massive event in 2018. He's had a really good career. And although he's still got youth on his side, he's been around forever. Yeah, and he's the first of three co-brothers that play professional pool. His third rack, copy and to break, leading by two racks to nil. <laughs> He's made the one on the side his first break. Didn't make another ball on a second and a beautiful out behind it. There's that one on the side. The two is going to get kicked in the other side. He's going to come away with a really nice shot on the pink four. Made three balls on the break. And Watch him staying away from that nine ball. You know, when a player not dominates like they do, like FSR has, players are gonna try and pick things apart and find out why and figure out why. And that break shot is a part of it. It's pretty nice here. You can keep it simple, just coming one rail off the purple five, up the right side of the nine for a little angle on the six. Trying for a first here over the next few days. Players from Chinese Taipei have had so much success on the international scene but they've never produced a world pool master. Well, nine ball, it's tough. There's so many great players, and it's only going to get tougher from here on out. First, you got to make your place in the world pool masters through the world nine ball rankings. For probably about a decade or so, in my opinion, I thought they were the strongest country in nine ball pool. Well, what's indisputable, Ko okay. is the strongest player in this Close match so far. After the safety error from Jason Shaw in the first rack, he sat down and watched because Ko is in control, leading by three racks to zero. With plenty to ponder, he's 3 0 down to Copigny, but we've already seen this evening that a deficit of that nature is very easy to overcome. Well, not easy in the sense of you can breeze past someone at will, but it can be overcome because our defending champion, Joshua Filler, was 5 1 up in the opening match of the tournament to Niels Fyan, and he didn't bother the scorers again. Yeah, Niels. Uh Played a really good match. Took advantage of the shots he got. Ooh, that one on the side is a little scary, though. 
Jason's trying to desperately get back to the table and Co has a nice shot here on the two. A little movement on the on the nine. So he's pretty thin on the two considering. May have to use the purple five to slow the cue ball down. One thing, if he does try to use the purple five coming off the blue two, he's got to worry about that scratch. What would be the lower right corner on your screen right now? So he's going to try and draw past it and then kill the cue ball. Oh, really nice. That shot there to the common eye, you wouldn't realize how great a shot that was to get the timing right to kill the cue ball for the three. Look at Jason Shaw yet to pot a ball. The man who holds the world record for the most balls in straight pool, knocked in in succession. Not off the mark here yet. <laughs> Another reason why this title it's held by so many, it's brutal. I mean, you got to go through a heck of a cast of players and, and get a few rolls at the right time and play exceptional pool as well. Didn't hit the pocket so clean, so the cue ball is going to overrun just a bit. It looked like a, the purple five went Extension by the Extension code. something about any Q sport also especially pool just watch how similar the deliveries are from of course Jason when we see it but coping Yi shot to shot for a moment he might have overcut the, the five there it just avoided the nine ball and went in and now 4-0 on the cards yeah, and he's had a, a lot of different racks so far even though early in this match a couple where he was perfectly in line every shot a great safety battle between the two players in rack number one but this rack a lot of grit here he's been out of line a bit You want them as easy as possible, of course you do. But when you run a rack like this, it must instill even greater confidence because he's knocked in so many good balls under pressure. Yeah, and he's like many of the greats of today's game and, and the game years ago, you know, it gets in that working mentality when you have a rack like this and you kind of settle in a little bit, kind of know you can handle more. And you understand that perfect position. Is wins the rock. This is a very tough section of the draw. The winner will take on Shane Van Boning or David Alcady in the quarterfinals. But right now, Copen Yi is in total control against Jason Shaw, who's yet to pot a single ball. The nickname is Eagle Eye. He's been a twice Moscone Cup MVP. His nine ball ranking is six. He's only a year older than his opponent. He's won the Turning Stone Classic, a tournament he thrives in already this year. But I think it's fair to say, Jeremy, by his standards, his career is in something of a lull at the moment. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, he, has a, he won that US Open that kind of eluded him there for a couple of years. He wants to win more of those, of course. And, and definitely he wants titles. I mean, that's uh, that's what he's here for. Of course, 
in the latter half of last year he won the turning stone again and he won the international open so i'm not saying he is in crisis or anything like that but we all know just how brilliant he is and certainly in the big matchroom events over the last year or two he's not quite hit the the heights we're used to yeah nothing against turning stone and the international two great events in the northeast part of the country and Jason seems to own that part of the USA when it comes to pool, but you know, you win it a few times, of course, and not having other titles, you can look past those a little bit because, you know, the World Nine Ball has eluded him, the World Pool Masters. Watch out, cue ball. Wow, and the tight side pocket will save you at times, Phil. And he can get past that far jaw to pop the blue too. Yeah, and he may even have an angle to go into the trouble part of the rack, which is the eight and the five, which I think is natural with the three lane. 38 nil in terms of balls potted and maybe adding to that total here. And anytime you're going into another ball, it's easy to take your eye off the object ball, which is the blue two here. Now, he's not wasting much time, so I think he does have the angle to go naturally into the five, maybe the eight. So he's elevating because the angle's slim. He's trying to create a little more power. Now, this is okay, though, because... I was wondering if he may consider, because the three is so nice, the red three, you can get to the backside of the purple five from some places, so maybe not try to open the five eight right there and just play position on the red three. Now, this is certainly too steep of an angle to hold for the purple five, so I got to suspect he's drawn one rail into the balls. Extension code. One of the shots he excels at, getting the most out of the draw stroke. why he's looking forward towards the seven. I think he's got the play to play it in the lower right. Draw the cue ball one rail, trying to catch just a piece of the eight. You know, Co has been responsible for some really good shots in this match already. That was almost the pick of the bunch. Yeah, and it was center cut as well. That's what I like seeing. And he actually got more out of the trawl stroke than he had figured to get, really. So we're going to see Jason back at the table. And at times, you know, during what you would call a little lull for Jason, we saw frustration set in. And I think that's something he's got to try to avoid. Try and put a lot of spin on this. Get some separation on the purple five in the cue ball. And he's so good at that. Wow. Really, really nice touch and definitely intended. <coughs> there was the jaw of the pockets. Something of a hindrance here. Maybe not. Well, all he can do is roll this trying to get the five up on the green six and just wander the cue ball by the nine or seven. Not a whole lot, lot else he can do. Kind of try to run to live another day. <laughs> now this is where the four nothing deficit, he's really got to set that aside. It will make you shoot at something offensively um, just to try and get something started. Extension code. He's got a few options. He can certainly chip the purple five into the six and use the nine. Just simply come back behind the nine. I think he may be attacking. I 
I thought he could see a piece of this ball. He immediately went to the jump cue, but I thought the right side of the purple five kind of came out. That's a great camera angle. He can certainly get at this. He'll overcut it and run the cue ball. Quite get the line on the cue ball. Friendly bump on the nine, though. And at this level, those subtle little nudges and bumps make so much difference. We will focus in on the golden breaks and the, the flukes and the big shots, but it's little slices of fortune like that that really do turn matches. Yeah, and that's what the thing that the players definitely notice. You know, some amateurs or some fans out there may not notice those little things. But uh, frustration, can, that's where that can start to settle in for sure. Big shot here. I know he's up 4-0, but to keep the heat on. I'll tell you what, Jeremy, I like the way he's potting. Oh, yeah. And he does totally remind me of FSR, the, the way they go about things, their process. Everything mental upstairs, and then really no, no quivering when they're down on the ball. You know what Jason said in the interview to start. One of his biggest comebacks was against Kobe. I think he said he was trailing ten to four. And that's what you'll need to hang on to here. Those good memories, those good vibes. I'll tell you just, you know, the true professional talked about Jason not getting ahead of himself down 4-0, going for something bad, right? Well, even the same for coping. He up 4-0. He's kept the handcuffs on Eagle Eye. And this is entirely one-sided to the point that Jason Shaw is yet to pot a ball of any significance whatsoever. How about this? 5 0 to Ko Ping Yi. And you have to say, if he carries on playing like this, it's going to be quite a short outing for both of them. Now, let's just take a quick look in the practice room, which is inside the arena. You might be able to hear the balls being thudded around. There on the right-hand side, one of the great practices, the, the most dedicated players you'll ever see. Shane Van Boning, and boy, does he get his reward for that hard work. Well, he told me he was going to go into town and get him some new shoes. I see they're on his feet, I think. I don't think I've seen those before, so... Well, he's going to retain a distinction at this tournament. Jeremy, he's the only player to successfully defend the Whirlpool Masters title. And after the elimination of Joshua Filler earlier on today, SVB will remain the only player for at least another 12 months. Yeah, and it's a nice one to talk about, but not something that's on his mind. The present is what SVB is thinking about. Rock six, copy need break, leading by five rocks to no. Well, he's been very consistent with the one on the side. Well, he's missed it, so a little jinx there. Nothing down. Don't know if Shaw really has a cuttable yellow one ball here. It's close. He's got a big wall to break the one back down. And get behind what is the two, three, four, five, I think.
He's right on the fence of cutting this one, and I'll tell you, see a little shake of the head there. He's going to have to play the safety, but I think he's fearing a little bit the jump cue here. Watch out for the nine ball with the one near. You'd say that's okay. I mean, the jump's easy. The kick's not bad. I tell you, with the six near the pocket, the green six, I may go across the table and kick at this one ball. The only reason being is I'm not really sure what he's playing with the jump cue. A little action on the nine, Phil. Ooh. What a call, Jeremy. It was so close to going in. It's been that kind of evening, hasn't it? That nine ball's been busy. Yeah, very busy. And he did hold the cue ball beautifully. He was hoping the one would escape off the side of the nine up the table, making things a little more difficult. But there you go for Shaw. Sure. Well, that was a eureka moment. First ball potted. He hopes the first of many. Uh-oh. He's going to get a little clip here, so he may end up fortunate with a side pocket, but you could tell a little grimace on the face once he struck that blue two. Now Shaw going back to the shorter cue, Phil. He had a little stint with the shorter cue, went back to the longer cue. Extension code. And now back to the standard length. Just missed it. And one of the least liked close shots right here. Elevated going to a blind pocket in the side. And especially having to hit it what looks like pretty light. Easy to hit this into the you know the facing nearest us as a viewer have this ball bobble like that that's exactly what wants to happen a lot because you hit it easier so the three drags a little bit kind of kicks a little bit and just doesn't agree with that tight side pocket and that's just the kind of reprieve that Shaw so badly needs As a player, you kind of know you have to aim that ball a little thinner, but it's almost embarrassing hitting it into the front point, it seems like, but that's kind of how you have to aim it. It's just a hard one to pull the trigger on, and now Jason's got to get out here and get the break going. It's a perfect cue ball here. He can just pinch it out to the center of the table. Maybe a hair past it if he wants. Swoops. But he's still getting his wings clipped by Copen Yee. Jason Shaw, at least he's got a rack on the board, but he does trail five to one. Jason, after a mistake and a lot of pressure on him because he finally got an opening. But Copen Yee with his first real mistake behind it. On oh, a try break. Now, this is again. We're a long way from the finish line, but this is where frustration I've seen, uh, you know, kind of set in with Jason when you know, a few things haven't gone his way. In last year's tournament, he suffered a heavy first round defeat. 7-2 against Mieszka Futunski from Poland. Well, the, 
This will be an interesting shot here. Not a lot of angle on the yellow one. Looks like he's going to try and stun one rail off the top rail. Kind of where he's standing, just past the side. This is certainly a shot you can miss your mark. And speed control is, is hard to judge because you're kind of manipulating the angle. Could easily end up behind the 3-9. You may get a friendly bump here. No, it's going to end up real nice. That was all manufactured from the man with the 5-1 lead. Now I'll be interested to see if he plays the draw off the nine here to open up the corner pocket for the purple five later in the rack. Because he's definitely going into a piece of the nine, it appears. Now he's got choices, which is kind of important considering where the six is, kind of impeding the path off the four, the purple, uh, the pink four, excuse me. This is where he's got to draw back feel and just take a little more of a shot on the purple five. The manner in which he played the previous shot told us the nine could have gone anywhere. The fact it's gone into open play would have made Chase and Shaw's heart sink. Because the way that coe has been playing, you fully expect him to clear. Yeah. You know, when you're playing well, you make your better decisions. Extension code. Coping he doesn't lose it between the ears very often. But what I always tell the players is remember how great you are. You can overcome a little bit. You can overcome a lot. Just keep making balls. Is that enough on the cue ball? Half a century of ball spotted by Copigny. We've seen some tidy performances tonight from Niels Fine and Max Lettner, but this, for me, is the best of the lot. Another tester here, mind you, queuing over the nine. But every test he gives himself, he passes. Yeah, and he keeps it simple. Uh, you know, it's a big key. Uh, again, remember all these shots you've made before. It's not ideal position, but he keeps it simple, and he plays with a natural path of the cue ball, which always helps. Doubt he gains the third rail, that being off the side rail here. He may just come two rails with some good speed. Yeah, I like that. Falling a little underneath the eight. So, so far, it's been the safety battles won for Coping Yi. Obviously, clearing the table better and, and obviously breaking better as well. If you're not impressed by the level of this performance, well, you should be. Copigny playing delightfully. He leads Jason Shaw by six racks to one. Remember, this is only a race to nine. So Shaw in a heap of trouble. Now let's just remind you about the format of this year's Whirlpool Masters, a four day event here at the Brentwood Center in Essex. 16 players in the event, 14 from the World Nine Ball Tour rankings, two wild cards. First round matches are a race to nine. That's what we're seeing at the moment. Quarterfinals and semifinals, that race extended to 11. And the final is a race to 13 here on Saturday evening. As with all of the matchroom events, it's a 30-second shot clock and it's one extension allowed per player per rack. All matches are winner breaks and I think that's the big thing for Jason Shaw right now. The 
the encouragement for him, if he can get on a roll, he can still turn this around. Yeah, absolutely. He's, he commented during his interview with Carl about, you know, really taking a look at the break shot with the new format, putting in a lot of time, getting it down. He didn't have his best break off. We could tell from the cue ball position, uh, but uh, just wait for that next opportunity. His problem is he's got a freight train co coping he to deal with. Rock eight, Copenhagen to break, leading by six rocks to one. What you notice with Copenhagen over the years, he's very level-headed. When he goes behind, he doesn't seem to drop his head, and when he goes well in front, he doesn't seem to get carried away. Yeah, absolutely. Talked about it earlier. Just like Jason, he can't get frustrated trailing. Same thing with Copenhagen. He can't get too happy, even though he's got a what looks like a, a very comfortable lead. And I'll tell you what, he's drawn nice on the two as well. He's got a nice angle to draw back for the red three. And he's off the rail with the cue ball, just inches away from the blue two. The only problem is maybe the green six in the middle of the table kind of impeding that path. But like I said earlier, he's one of the best getting the most out of the draw stroke. So we'll see. was a narrow positional slot to find. Now, has he been scuppered by that contact with the nine? I think he's okay. Even if he has to put a little left side spin to get a little more grab on the three ball, that's how he's gonna hold position with the pink four anyways. So stay off the rail though. Make sure there is no song. Should be okay. And this is where on the slick table, you may see a little elevation of the cue, a little more of a stun shot versus your pool room table or your club table. You could just check this with a little left English. So you may see a slight elevation on, on the cue stick here. Extension code. Good thing is he's got plenty of angle. I like him striking downward on this. Doesn't have to get so ideal on the purple five with the green six near. Yeah, I think this is the smarter way to play it on the slick table. Isn't this a lesson for every player? This is someone with abundant skills, world-class abilities, who realizes the importance of trying to keep it as simple as possible. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah and trust in the process. I talk about it all the time with people that I guarantee you on a bet, if I could just feed Steph Curry the ball, he could probably make three or 400 free throws in a row, but right in the middle of the game, what does he do? Takes his dribbles, goes through his process. When it means the most, these, these players don't get in too much of a hurry. Fell a little straight here. He's got to cheat the pocket. Little low left spin. Powerless from his chair. The beat goes on. Copen Yi looks very solid in all departments. He's now just two racks away from victory. What would be a very convincing victory indeed against, as we've said before, a world-class opponent. It's one-sided in the extreme. Now, lots of pool coming up this year. And of course, Co and indeed Jason Shaw will be 
an integral part of that. Co didn't have the best of times in the UK Open last year. He was out early, the most surprising early departure, actually. We're going to be at the Copper Box Arena in London at the end of May, early June for that one. The Spanish Open, the inaugural event in Lugo, Spain, coming up in late June. Also, over there, the FSR Junior Open, first ever staging, and then the World Cup, an event we always look forward to. Actually, the World Cup of Pool was held right here in Brentwood last summer in sweltering temperatures, Jeremy. It felt like being back home in Texas. The European Open, the inaugural event was played in Fulda, Germany in August last year, and it will return there for a second time in 2023. The US Open in Atlantic City is the, the last week in September, and of course, the great USA Europe rivalry in the Moscone Cup will this time take place at Alexandra Palace in London, December 6 to 9. And that's just a selection of the events coming your way because there's so much pool on the scene now, thanks to Matchroom and the new nine ball rankings. The game has never been healthier or busier. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, if you just ever get the chance or the privilege to come to one of these events, you can see all the hard work put in. Of course, the players working harder than they ever have as well. Culmination of things going on is just something incredible. It's been a very consistent one on the side. He's missed it only once. We've all got an awful kiss and a dry break that, again, Jason could easily start to get a little frustrated. He's kept his composure very well. Jason for a long time and had a lot of Push very out, real situations and conversations with him. And to me, he's, he's still engaged, Phil. It just needs a shot. I think this is for Jeremy. Copenhagen has played very nicely. He's not had an outrageous run of luck, but what's been going, he's had it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, just like, just like the Lechner in the last, the gold brace we can, you know, set aside, right? But just during the match, he had a few rolls, that positional shot on the three that where he fell in the window. But of course, he backed it up with some great shots after getting those rolls. So. I think the best thing for Jason as far as a role is just some type of open look. It doesn't matter if it's tough or not. Now Jason has rolled out to an Back awkward to position here. And what I mean by that is I don't see anything that really says natural. And for such an open look, I was going to say I might pass this one. This is where you can look at it if you don't like it. 7-1 lead. Let me, you know, let me make him earn it. I hit this with light speed. He's going to leave a jump or an easy kick or maybe a straight look at the one. Not his best effort, but I think a good decision by Coping. From side on, the gap is evident. He's coming back on the purple five with the cue ball. I wouldn't be surprised if this one's welded right on the purple five. I like kicking across here, yeah. This is where you get the separation, or at least a better percentage of separation. I tried to go twice behind it. That was getting a little oh, tricky, I think. Oh, in hand. And the situation for Jason Shaw is growing more and more concerning. Yeah, and you know, to call it how I see it, that was the first stroke that I thought I saw a little frustration in from Jason. Uh, not, not to use the word, you know, not lazy at all. That's not like that, but maybe a little defeated. A total of 13 nations represented in this year's Whirlpool Masters is the lone representative of Great Britain, Scotland's Jason Shaw, about to exit.
You have to think so the way things are going. Yeah, absolutely. A tricky out here, though, with the green six and nine kind of attached. I'm not sure it's playable. Maybe the combination on the side actually plays, but tricky here. Just a little speed control. So he played it light to go back and forth off the three, I guess. Uh, this has gotten a little funny. And really, that's so impressive besides David Alcady's late wild card entry. There were no countries with more than two players besides Austria with three off of the rankings. Man, he's so good at that shot from all different types of angles and situations. And now he's gotten perfect to draw between the 7-8 back for the purple five. So this tells me he hasn't really shown much concern to the green six, so it must play in the lower right corner, Phil. And if the seven passes the eight in the side, that makes things on the six a lot easier. Extension code. So the way he's sizing that up tells me maybe he wants to draw off the green six to get on to the brown seven. When it comes to potting balls, there's been no hint of vulnerability whatsoever. He's been thoroughly dependable. Yeah, and it seems like the tougher the shots, he's hit even better. Uh, a few of them to open and get a few racks under his belt early and really set the tone for this match. This is going to run across. From nowhere, out of line on the nine. The way he's played, you'd heavily fancy him to knock it in, but a strange thing happened on nine balls. Ooh, that wiped its rock. feet, but it went in nevertheless. And as a consequence, Copin Yi very swiftly and very efficiently finds himself on the hill. Jason Shaw now has to win the last eight racks to pull this out of the fire. Lots of tidying up of racks where it's not been straightforward and yet he's made it look so. So, Jeremy, the question is, is the writing on the wall? Well, it's there. It's just a matter if he takes it down. He's got a very simple combination on the blue two into the red three. Kind of doubt, you know, if he gets that down and has position, he goes for a, a four nine combo. There is a way to play position, but we may see a quick winner. It could be a quick winner, regardless at eight to one, the score. Right, wants to ease this in. Doesn't want to get, you know, lose control of the blue two. Okay, from this angle here, he may end up playing the four nine, the pink four onto the nine. 
It's a little difficult to control drawing up the rail, getting the speed and the line right. So if it's in front of you, don't argue with it. Just go ahead and t take it down. He's got nice and close to this as well. Yeah, and this won't be hit very hard, but it certainly won't be babied Extension either. Code. Somewhere around medium speed. That is that. Four nine, the combination that completes this very impressive victory for Copenhagen. You know, over the years we've seen him play lots of matches in matchroom events. We've seen him play well. We've seen him play nicely. I think that's the best individual performance I can remember from him in quite some time. There was just no weakness whatsoever in any department, and when he got those difficult pots, those testing pots. He came up with the goods. That's why he's defeated Jason Shaw so comprehensively by nine racks to one. This was the clincher. 4-9, in it goes. What an evening's work for Ko Pinyi of Chinese Taipei. I think he's made a statement there. On Saturday night, if he's lifting the trophy, if he continues to play like that, no one would be surprised whatsoever to defeat jason shaw by any score is quite an achievement to do so by nine racks to one